Well, we've just been uh, playing a uh, game and a workshop at the Community Matters uh, conference in which uh, we played through SLAPM, the various organisations in SLAPM, the way in which they're satisfied or dissatisfied with their existing buildings and how they develop them. So just having a little debrief um, here with... Uh, Hilary Reid and uh, Anne Davis and uh, Tim Judge from Community Matters, who was playing the council in this, and uh, Drew Mackey, who was facilitating uh, with me. So just let me pass the microphone over, um, Anne, if you'll hold that. Um, and uh, our aim was to get some conversations going. Did we succeed? Well, you did indeed, but we could have done with a bit more time. It was just getting stuff very interesting, and it was time to stop. All right, so what sort of insights came out from it? Where was the focus of discussion? Ourselves to start off with and then looking outwards to other um, organisations and just talking to each other, that's the truth of it. Yeah. Yes, I think uh, we were just gathering our own information, realising how much we did, well, what we did know and how much we really didn't know about our building and also um, the need to connect with our other, other community buildings in the area so that we can make the best use of all the facilities, not just the one that we're attached to. So it wasn't just about the what do you do about your building. It was very much how do you collaborate with other groups in the area and make best use of all the assets and in the area. And identifying yeah. ideas yeah. of each other. And identifying what the need is in the community and then try to find out how the buildings match rather than the other way around. Yeah. I do think we need to get young people involved yeah. in these uh, conversations as well. And Tim, you were uh, playing the council um, mm, yeah. in this, so uh, what sort of discussions were you engaged with and how did it feel? Um, it felt under pressure actually, it was interesting. Um, so obviously um, uh, it was much in demand to answer questions on, on various different things around ownership, and around how I can, or how the council can help, help the groups um, in, in their plans and, and dreams. And actually it was interesting that, um, that uh, you felt quite uh, obliged um, to help the people that were doing such good work but actually felt quite constrained because there's only, there's only certain things you can and can't do um, but it was really nice to see all the groups work together um, there was, a, there was a, a, quite a buzz in the room and actually people were almost immediately talking to each other and that was, that was quite nice to see that actually people were more interested in their way in, in solving their problems between them um, than necessarily demanding that the council solve them maybe whether not believing the council would solve them or whether actually um, that they, they think they could probably do it more in a, in a community setting Okay, Drew, um, pass over the mic to you. Um, we emphasised at the beginning this was very much an experiment, first run of this game. What's your impressions of how it went? Uh, it was very experimental. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, um, in any game, you know, the first run is always a bit of a shambles because you don't know which systems are going to work and which, which are not going to work. You know, whether are going to work or not. Um, a lot of the basic information, I think, could have been simpler. Uh, today, the cards, etc., could have been better laid out, etc. We'll have a look at that. Um, and the uh, the instructions, I think, could have been clearer. Um, and that's possibly because we were not absolutely clear how the play of the game was going to go as well. So uh, we've got a bit of cleaning up to do there as well. But generally, I think it worked. Uh, it certainly generated a lot of quite heated conversations at times. Um, and uh, I just hope that people that played it, you know, got as much out of it as we did. We certainly got a lot of ammunition now to, to be able to, uh, to advance the game and make it more easily playable by people who are not being tutored by us, but who pick it up from the internet and just use it all play. And just finally, Tim, we ended up uh, chatting um, amongst ourselves about the uh, potential for this sort of a, a game in neighbourhoods, particularly if it's the sort of thing that people can run for themselves. There's some really terrific facilitation um, exercises, processes and so forth, very well packaged, researched and so on, but they usually require a professional facilitator. Do you think that um, we could do something like this, which, which groups could run for themselves to generate some conversations, promote some collaborations? I think so. I think I mean, it's, it's, it's more than just the groups themselves. I think it's what, what the, the beauty of this kind of game is, that actually you can invite people from uh, external to the organisation and because it's a game it does provide quite a level playing field um, to enable people to play roles and to actually start exploring information without necessarily sitting in their, in their current roles as, as community centre manager or as local local authority officer or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just, just by doing that it's, I think it has quite a, quite a lot of benefits for 
um, uh, for the for the whole community in that sense. And I, think, I think it works well with with sort of with um, with other planning um, planning games and that kind of stuff. I think it could work well with this one too.